How do mirrors work? Mirrors are basically reality photocopiers for light. You stand in front of one, and an instant clone is staring back at you. But how? Light bounces. That's it. When photons, tiny packets of light, hit something, they usually scatter in a million directions, like when you drop Skittles on the floor. Your shirt, your wall, your dog, all scatter light in a messy way so you just see colors. But a mirror? It's smooth, like really smooth, way smoother than your skin or your phone screen. So when light hits it, the photons bounce off at the exact same angle they came in. That's called specular reflection. Basically, light in, light out. Same order, just reversed. But why does it flip what you see, left and right, but not up and down? The truth is, it doesn't. Mirrors don't actually flip anything. Your brain just thinks they do. Here's what's really happening. When you raise your right hand, the mirror shows your right hand. It's still on the right side of your body. Nothing's moved. The only difference is now it's facing you. So your brain goes, wait, that looks backwards. The shiny surface? It's usually just a thin layer of aluminum or silver glued to glass. That's what causes the reflection. Without it, a mirror would just be a transparent piece of glass. Why do onions make you cry? Onions look innocent. They're just little vegetable bulbs sitting quietly in your kitchen. Then you cut one open and your eyes start stinging. Why? Inside every onion are tiny cells full of different chemicals, all living in peace until you slice it. Your knife is basically smashing those cells apart. When that happens, two chemicals meet for the first time. One is an enzyme, the other is a sulfur compound. Mix them together and they create a brand new chemical with a scary name, synpropanethyl S-oxide. That chemical turns into a gas, and when it floats up into your face, your eyes freak out. They think they're being attacked, so they send a signal to your tear glands. Flush it out. Your body basically hoses your eyeballs down like they're on fire. Onions didn't evolve this to ruin your cooking experience. It's actually a defense mechanism to stop animals from eating them. Turns out, it doesn't work. We still eat them. We just cry too. If you want to cry less, chill the onion before cutting. The cold slows the chemical reaction. Or cut it under running water so the gas can't reach your eyes. Or you could wear a full pair of scuba goggles. Why do we get hiccups? Hiccups are basically your diaphragm throwing a tantrum. Your diaphragm is a big muscle under your lungs that helps you breathe. It moves down when you inhale, up when you exhale. Normally it's fine, but sometimes it just spasms. When that happens, your lungs suddenly suck in air way too fast. Your vocal cords slam shut, and that makes the classic hick sound. Why does it spasm in the first place? It could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe you ate too fast, or drank something fizzy, or laughed so hard your breathing went off script. Sometimes it's because your stomach is full and pressing on the diaphragm. Scientists aren't 100% sure why humans hiccup, but one theory is that it's a leftover reflex from way back when we were tiny tadpole-like creatures learning to breathe. Basically, your body's still carrying an ancient glitch. Most hiccups go away on their own, but that doesn't stop people from inventing wild cures. You've probably heard of the main few. Holding your breath, drinking water upside down, being scared half to death. Do they work? They can, but maybe you just stopped hiccuping by chance and gave your friend all the credit. How do cats always land on their feet? If you drop a cat, gently of course, unless something's gone very wrong, it's going to twist in midair and stick the landing like an Olympic gymnast. This isn't luck. It's called the writing reflex, and it's one of the coolest bits of animal engineering nature ever came up with. The writing reflex kicks in the instant a cat's brain realizes it's falling. Inside their inner ear is a special balance system, the vestibular apparatus, which works like the world's tiniest gyroscope. It constantly tracks which way is up, even when the cat is spinning. The second the cat senses it's upside down, a chain reaction begins. Step 1. The head turns. The cat locks its eyes on the ground, like a fighter pilot lining up a landing strip. Step 2. The front half of the body twists one way, the back half twists the other. Cats can do this because their spines are insanely flexible. They have more vertebrae than we do, and no stiff collarbone to get in the way. Step 3. Once facing the right way, they spread out all four legs, arch their backs, and puff out slightly. This increases air resistance, slowing the fall, kind of like a tiny parachute, made of fluff. Cats are also surprisingly light for their size, which means they don't slam into the ground with as much force as a heavier animal. In fact, past a certain height, they actually have more time to adjust and slow their descent, which is why some cats have survived absurdly high falls. There's even a term for this, high-rise syndrome. 
Vets use it to describe cats that have fallen from apartment buildings and walked away with minimal injuries. The writing reflex starts developing in kittens at just a few weeks old, and by around seven weeks, most have mastered it. It's instinct, not training. Your cat can't go to falling school. It's just born with the program installed. Why does your voice sound different in recordings? You know that moment when someone plays back a video and you instantly think, who is that? Yeah, bad news, that's just you. Here's the deal. When you speak, you're hearing your voice in two completely different ways at the same time. First is the normal way. Sound waves travel out of your mouth, through the air, into your ear canal, vibrate your eardrum, and your brain goes, cool, that's me. Second is the secret way. Those sound vibrations also travel through the bones and tissues inside your head. This bone conduction adds a deep, rich bass layer to your voice, like your skull is running its own private subwoofer. That's the voice you're used to hearing every single day. The problem? A microphone doesn't live in your head. It can't hear that extra bass boost your skull gives you. It only picks up the air version of your voice, the thinner, higher-pitched, slightly more nasal version that other people hear all the time. When you play that back, your brain is confused. It's like listening to a song you've only ever heard through good headphones, but now it's blasting from a bad phone speaker. This is why your recorded voice feels so weird. It's not that the recording is wrong, it's that your brain's been lying to you your whole life. Your everyday voice has been sweetened by bone conduction, and without it, you feel exposed. The good news? Everyone else already knows this recording voice and they're fine with it. They're not hearing anything strange. You're just meeting the real public version of yourself for the first time. How does Bluetooth work? Bluetooth is basically short-range, invisible magic, except it's actually just radio waves. It's the reason your headphones can talk to your phone and your phone can talk to your car. Here's what's happening. Bluetooth sends data using very low-power radio waves. Instead of blasting across the city like FM radio, it stays in a tiny bubble, usually about 30 feet, so it doesn't drain your battery or annoy your neighbor's speaker. Both devices, say your phone and your earbuds, have tiny Bluetooth chips inside. These chips agree on a frequency, start sending signals back and forth, and there you go. They're paired. But here's the cool part. Bluetooth doesn't hog one channel. It uses frequency hopping, switching between 79 different channels hundreds of times per second. That means even if your Wi-Fi or someone else's Bluetooth is nearby, it can dodge the interference. Data, whether it's music, a phone call, or that photo you shouldn't have airdropped, gets chopped into tiny packets. Each packet jumps across these frequencies in a secret pattern only the two devices know. That's why some random person can't just tune in and listen to your playlist. The range and speed depend on the version of Bluetooth you're using. Newer ones go farther, faster, and use less power. But the core idea has been the same since the 90s. Tiny bursts of radio waves hopping between channels, making two gadgets act like they've been best friends forever. Why does your brain ignore the second the? Read that again. You probably missed the second the. And that's the whole point. Here's what's going on. Your brain is lazy. It loves predicting what's coming next so it can save time and energy. When you read, your brain isn't looking at every single letter. It's scanning for patterns and filling in the blanks. It's like autocomplete for thoughts. So when you see a super common phrase, like the cat or in the, your brain is already halfway through the sentence before your eyes have even finished it. If there are two thes in a row, your brain's like, yeah, yeah, I got it, and just deletes one. It's not a glitch in your eyes. They see both words. It's a glitch in your attention. This is why you can proofread something 10 times and still miss obvious mistakes. Your brain is too busy being helpful and predicting the next thing to notice what's actually there. Want to catch the second the? Read slower. Or read backwards, word by word. It breaks your brain's prediction habit. Otherwise, you'll just keep skipping over the the second the without even realizing it. How does caffeine work? Caffeine is the world's most socially acceptable drug. It's in your coffee, your tea, your soda, your energy drinks, and even in chocolate. We all act like it's just a little pick-me-up. So what's it actually doing to you? Your body runs on a chemical called adenosine. Throughout the day, adenosine builds up in your brain and makes you feel tired. It's like sand piling up in an hourglass. When enough of it collects, your brain says, all right, time for bed. Caffeine's master trick, it looks just like adenosine to your brain. So when you drink coffee, caffeine molecules rush in and start plugging themselves into the adenosine receptors, the little docking stations that normally make you feel sleepy. But caffeine doesn't activate them. It just blocks them. Your brain's basically trying to hit the tired button 
and caffeine sitting on it saying, nope, not today. With the sleep signals blocked, your brain's other chemicals go wild. Dopamine and adrenaline get a boost, your heart rate speeds up, and you feel more alert, focused, maybe even a little superhuman. The catch? Caffeine doesn't give you energy, it just hides your tiredness. When it wears off, all that adenosine comes flooding back at once, which is why people experience a crash. Your body also gets used to caffeine over time, so you need more for the same effect, which is how people build up crazy caffeine addictions. Why do you yawn? Yawning is something everyone does, but scientists still don't completely agree on why. For decades, the most common explanation was oxygen, the idea that yawning helps bring more air into your lungs when you need it. It made sense at first, take in a big breath, get a boost of oxygen, problem solved. But research has shown that yawning still happens even when your oxygen levels are perfectly fine, so the old theory doesn't quite hold up. A newer idea focuses on brain temperature. Your brain works best within a very specific range, and when it gets too warm, it can slow down. Yawning might help cool it down. When you yawn, you take in a deep breath of cooler air, stretch the muscles in your face, and increase blood flow in your head, all of which can help bring the temperature down slightly. This might be why yawning is more common in warm environments, or when you're tired and your brain has been active for a long time. There's also the contagious side of yawning. Seeing, hearing, or even reading about a yawn can make you do it too. This could be linked to empathy and social bonding, a way for groups of animals, including humans, to sync up their states of alertness and rest. So while the exact reason isn't fully proven, the most likely explanation is that yawning is your brain's way of regulating itself, a built-in cooling and reset mechanism that just happens to spread from person to person. Comment if this section has made you a yawn, and I want you to think about yawning right now. Haha, <laughs> good luck. How does Face ID know it's you? Face ID works a lot like your brain does when it sees a friend across the room, except it uses lasers, math, and way more precision. When you look at your phone, tiny sensors near the front camera project more than 30,000 invisible infrared dots onto your face. These dots create a 3D depth map, capturing every contour, the curve of your cheeks, the shape of your jaw, the height of your nose. It's not just a photo, it's a full mathematical model of your face. The infrared camera then takes a picture of those dots and the rest of your face in infrared light. This data is turned into a series of numbers, a unique face signature, and compared against the encrypted version stored inside your phone from when you first set up Face ID. If the two match closely enough, your phone unlocks. It's designed to work in different lighting, with hats, glasses, or even facial hair changes. That's because Face ID doesn't just rely on surface details, it measures the depth and relative positions of your features, which are harder to change. So when you glance at your phone and it just opens, it's not guessing. It's reading a complex 3D map of you in under a second, deciding with near-perfect accuracy whether it's really you, and allowing you to unlock your phone.